Hair extensions are something that I periodically will use, but very rarely, to be honest. I'll use them for a special event. I'll use them if I'm gonna be on a shoot or I need my hair to last all day and my hair tends to go flat and limp in its natural state. So if I need a little extra help and I don't wanna to touch up, I'm not against adding a few hair extensions in there. I've never had hair extensions beyond just temporary clip-ins. There are a lot of different hair extension options from beaded ones to tape-ins, you name it. In this demo though, I'm gonna show you how I insert the clip-ins. I just have two here. These are called fill-ins from the Barefoot Blonde uh, hair line and how I trim them accordingly so they blend really nicely with my hair. A quick disclaimer, I'm a licensed stylist, so I feel really comfortable doing this myself. Uh, if you are not and you want the best result with your clip-in hair extensions, my advice to you would be bring them in to your stylist and have him or her clip them in place where it makes sense on your head and have him or her trim them, texturize them, make them work with your haircut. Uh, there's nothing worse than a hair extension that's really obviously not blended in with your hair, um, whether it's color or the cut. So bring it to your stylist and just call them and say like, hey, I got some hair extensions I want to wear uh, randomly at any given time. Can you cut them so they match with my hair? Um, so these are 14 inches to start. Uh, this is the shortest length for the fill-in option, which is what I like to buy. Um, I will put links to these extensions right below the video if you want to check it out. But let's go ahead and clip them in and then I'll show you how to trim them. My personal rule of thumb when I'm clipping extensions in is to really not go higher than my temple. The worst would be for the seam part of your extension to show, and anything higher than your temple is probably going to peek through your hair. So temples are lower. I go through and start at the front of my face and then clip the extension toward the back, trying to stay as parallel to the ground as possible with my parting. So you can see the extension goes past my hair, um, maybe by about two inches. So I really don't need to cut a lot of the length off, but it is vital that you clip the extensions in before you trim them. It's also vital that you don't trim your own hair. So the easiest way to keep your hair separated from an extension when you're establishing kind of that base length is go ahead and clip off all of the hair above the hair extension clip that you just put in. Let's see if I can do this without seeing it. Um, this is just potentially going to get in your way. And so if you can just grab a duckbill clip and clip it up, you can be a little bit more sure that you won't accidentally cut your hair shorter, especially since the idea with extensions is you're trying to get your hair to look a little bit longer. On that note, you can use extensions like I will for adding thickness. You don't have to always add length with them. So here is the extension clipped in. I've clipped off my natural hair, and I'm gonna use my natural hair down here as the guide for trimming it. When you're cutting the bottom of your extensions, never slice across horizontally. Always hold your shears upwards toward the hair, maybe even on a little angle and point cut back and forth for a more natural finish. And no pressure, but you get one shot. <laughs> because extensions are an established length. So what I like to do is comb straight down, as straight as I can, from the section it is coming from. And then I look for like the weight of my natural hair behind the extension. So I can see it's ending right there. So I'm gonna take my shears and just point cut into the section. Nothing too precise. I always wanna take more uh, smaller snips because I can always take more off, but once you take too much off, you can't go back. So you can see as I turn my head here, I've got some more length back there. I'm pretty pleased with how that looks. And instead of trying to reach back and cut it, I'm gonna cut the back corner once I've taken the extension out. So let me move on to my left side, get that established length line in there, and then I'll take the extensions out and make sure they're even. Another quick note here about trimming your hair is make sure that you're not pulling the section too far from where it grows out from your head. If you pull it too far forward, you're gonna get an angled cut that you may not want. If you pull it too far out, it's gonna be shorter than you want it to be. So try your best to comb it straight down 
and take small little snips. The extensions are out. I took my left side out and put it on the left side of my sink. Took my right side out and put it on the right side. I'm picking up my left side here. So what I'm gonna do is just take a look at the angle of the cut. And you can see this back corner was left. Since this was on the left side of my head, the shorter part of the extension would be closer to my face. Hope you're tracking with all of that. So I'm just gonna comb it down. And then I'll take my shears and just cut into the hair. I prefer cutting hair dry, especially when it's an extension because I do not want it to shrink up at all. And notice I'm just going back and forth, just trimming the ends a little. What I always like to do to take away from like the blunt corners of the end of an extension is kind of cut a triangle into the very last section and the very first section. This softens and tapers when the extension starts. So I'm going to leave my left one there, put it back on the left side. And trust me, the sides of the extensions really matter when you're cutting them. This is my right side. So you'll see the bottom corners over here on my left. This would be in the back of my head. So same thing, I'm grabbing the shears and just point cutting up into the extension. Then I'll take off the corner. You may have an easier time doing this while the extension is laying flat, but I wanted to show you all. So it's kind of a rounded base. I'm seeing I've got a little bit of extra length here, so I'm just gonna point cut into that. It's not gonna look like you're taking a lot of hair off and it shouldn't. Okay, so my right side is done as well. Next step is putting them back in place and checking the length. So once you've tweaked and trimmed and made sure they at least line up with the very bottom of your hair, you can choose whether or not you wanna go through and point cut into them even more to taper the ends or just leave them how they are. I find too that after I've cut them, I like to hit them with the flat iron at least at the ends just to soften it a little bit so it's not such a blunt finish and I'll just blend it in with the rest of my hair as well. Straight hair can show extensions more easily than curled hair can. So if you're wearing extensions for the first time, whether it's for a special event or you just want to experiment with them, you'll have a more seamless finish if you have at least a little bit of a bend in your hair, whether that's just a curl at the bottom or like a curl with a curling iron. So just keep that in mind. Well, I hope this demo was helpful for you. You learned something. If you want to try extensions out, they are great for adding bulk and thickness to hair. Not, and you don't always have to add length. You'll see like I line them up with my hair length because I don't need my hair to be any longer. Just like it to look a little fuller at the ends. They're also great for adding more weight to an updo or a ponytail or something like that. So don't think extensions have to equal long hair. Extensions can do a lot of different things for you. So I'd encourage you if you're curious to play around with it, especially if you have a special event coming up and you want to just add a little bit more hair to your hair, whether it's adding volume or adding thickness to an updo.